Located in the area known as the Bridgewater Triangle in Massachusetts, the Hockamock Swamp is a 200 square mile murky wetland with a bloody past and a mysterious present. For decades, paranormal experts and just locals have documented bizarre UFO sightings, monster-like encounters, and hauntings in this area. Why is their head chopped off? Oh, what? Whoa. Shh, shh, shh. Man. Whatever it is, it's getting closer. Holy. Guys, there's nothing here. Is there anything strange in these part of the woods? Why does part of me wants to go back into the forest right now. Strapped to a stretcher, wrapped tightly inside a survival suit, it started, harmlessly enough, an afternoon hike around the property behind Drew's house. I kind of dragged him into it. We uh, decided to go and see if we could find the end. We went really deep out in the swamp, and there's a lot of water out there. As they meandered, the temperature started to drop. The sun began to set, and the boys suddenly realized they had no idea where they were. Ron. Watch her going back yeah, too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maureen. Come on, Maureen, fight him. Maureen. 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 Water. Maureen. What is up, explorers? We are back with another episode of Beyond the Dark. And in today's episode, it's going to be slightly different. We are looking for creatures or monsters you can say. I've had my fair share of experience here in these forests where if I've been chased out by this orb of the Pukwudgie that shapeshift into an orb and floated around and chased us out. I've captured the orb myself and that clip is right here. Yo, no, I see a light. I see a light. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Yo, shh, shh. Get down, get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. Yeah. Yo, did you see it? Yes. It's not captured. We're gonna be investigating this forest tonight. We've been inside here in the past. We're back at a new location. I've never been in this side of the forest. It goes on with 16,000 square feet. I've been doing, and you guys know this if you watch my previous Hockamock Swamp video, I've been doing Hockamock Swamp now for the last eight years, but I've only been here about 15 times, which is still a lot. I've never been down here, and there's a lot of ways into the Hockamock Swamp that I still don't know about. The word Hockamock means spirits that dwell here. Now, right now, we are meeting up with a guy named Aaron who actually made a documentary on the Bridgewater Tri Triangle, and he calls it the Bridgewater Triangle. Came out in 2013, and it was a big hit around here because all the people around here like these guys, these guys, they all know and believe that this place is haunted in the woods. It's parked right there. Dude. I've never been here before, so I don't know what to expect. Yeah, me either. All right, we're going to pull up just maybe behind him. So, yeah, this is so this is going to be a new place for me. I'm going to pin this one. A lot of different ways inside this swamp. So we're going to get some uh, inf information with Aaron. We're going to have a little word with him. Kind of like, you know, pick his brain a bit. See, you know, give us advice what he thinks about the Pukwudgies and the creatures here and the spirits. So let's go do that. Oh, oh wow. It, Dude, it, that's it, sick. It used to look bad. It doesn't hold up well. It's kind of a cheap hole. No, it looks cool though. The Bridgewater Triangle sits within the southeastern portion of Massachusetts and includes a number of locations known for unexplained occurrences. The most prominent of which include the legendary Hockamock Swamp, and the infamous Freetown Fall River State Forest. The Triangle's traditional borders are revealed by connecting the dots between the town of Abington to the north, the town of Freetown to the southeast, 
and the town of Rehoboth to the southwest. So, so Aaron, can yes. you explain like why did you do a documentary here? I did the Bridgewater Triangle documentary for a selfish reason. I try to pick local topics that I know would draw a national audience. And I had heard about the Bridgewater Triangle back when I was in college and had done a short student film on that back then. This was back in like 2000, 2003. And then I, I realized that there was like this massive international interest in the Bridgewater Triangle, especially for people that are into the paranormal. Right. And so I thought, you know, if I'm ever more established in the video production filmmaking industry, I could produce a real feature length documentary on the Bridgewater Triangle. Cause you dropped this in 2013. 2013. Yeah, cause when I, I don't know how old I was, but I remember I was young and I would always come in this forest with my friends and I was like kind of lurking around and like, dude, how it all began, we're like, I was like, what is this in the forest? I see, there was like this floating orb. And back then I didn't know what it was, but it, it would like float around and kind of like chase us out of the forest. I, we would keep coming back for the entertainment of it because we liked it so much. And then, but more I kept, when I watched the documentary, that's when I learned about puck wedgies. Yeah. Now, what is your take on puck wedgies? Like, I just so I, I am a major skeptic when it comes to the paranormal and the unexplained. I'm not a spiritual per, a spiritual person. I'm not a religious person. I don't really believe in any of that stuff. So I tell people when I walked into the project, I was a 99% skeptic. But when I walked out of the project, I was like a 96. Okay, so, so you did, had like a little. There was a few things in the documentary that kind of even made me as a skeptic kind of scratch my head. And one of them was Bill Russo's Creature Encounter, which is in our documentary. He's the, the older man with the fedora and the glasses, and he talks about out walking his dog near the Hockamock Swamp in Raynham, and this creature came out of the woods and started to communicate with him, and his dog got nervous, huh. and the creature uh, said, Ewan Chu, Ewan Chu, and started making these weird sounds and trying to beckon him to come closer. And that was this, that, that it happened back in 1990 and when I got in contact with him I was like is this a real thing because it almost read like a fictional story and he said oh no this is an absolute real thing that happened to me and up to that point the only existence of his story was on this obscure blog that nobody had really heard about and this guy just tells a story comes across as completely believable incredible and I believe that he thinks that he saw something. Now, whether what he saw can be explained or not is a whole separate thing, but he wow. absolutely believes that he saw this creature. He said it was wow. about three to four feet tall, covered with long brown hair, had a pot belly, a face which looked like a chipmunk. I mean, he describes it to a T. We even had a guy draw a sketch of the creature based on his description, almost like a composite sketch that a police, to, police sketch artist right. would do. That makes me think puckwudgies are legit too. Because they're saying, right, they, they're saying like puck wedgies are what you're saying and they also say that they can morph into a ball of energy or a light yeah and like they're there to protect the force but they were they were like nicer back then but now they became more evil and i think that's because of the war that happened i'm, I'm not i'm far from an expert on puck right wedgies, but yeah. the lore i believe is that they initially were more mischievous tricksters right and now they have more of a sinister purpose and they may you know beckon you to your death that's the story but that's the thing so so we have footage i don't know if you've seen it but we we have a ball of light footage that was kind of floating in front of us shot around here shot around here can you tell us the history about the swamp and how it even became to be like this creature sighting, evil kind of cursed land because it has something to do with like a war. Do you know like anything? So, so the, one of the running theories on why there's this alleged negative activity in the Bridgewater Triangle stems back to a major conflict between the Native Americans and the European settlers back in the late 1600s. Um, back in 1675, the local Wampanoag tribe essentially rebelled against the repression they were receiving at the hands of the English settlers. Uh, at the time, the, the chief of the Wampanoag tribe was a guy named Metacomet, who was actually the son of Massasoit, who was the chief of the Wampanoag when the, the pilgrims had landed back at Plymouth Rock. Wow. So this was his son, and over that, uh, that period of time between 1620 and 1675, more and more restrictions and more and more uh, unfair practices were placed on the Native Americans and King Philip's War was essentially the breaking point. And on a per capita basis, it's the bloodiest war in American history. Uh, right here on these grounds. Um, you know, you, you throw the numbers yeah. up against like the Civil War, they don't seem like much, but in, in terms of the percentage of the number of people that actually lived here, Back it's still the considered the bloodiest war in American history. Wow. So the running theory theory amongst the paranormal community is that the the 
ferocity of that war and the negative aspects of it and the, 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 the savage fighting that took place during that war is what sparked this negative energy in the region and that some people believe the Native Americans may have cursed this land Correct. Uh, of the Bridgewater Triangle. Now, there's no right. proof of that. That's just a, a running theory, but um, I think that's the predominant theory as to why there's this negative energy and all right. these mysterious things happening in the Bridgewater Triangle. I've had my own experiences happen, but people are claiming they have the, they seen Bigfoot, Mothman, the Puckwudgies, UFO sightings, like there's more than just even ghosts here, it's everything. There are things that happen here, or are reported here anyway, that aren't necessarily thought of as being related to one another. Like yeah. what relationship does Bigfoot have with a UFO or exactly. you know, a ritualistic cult activity in the Freetown State Forest? What would that have to do with uh, you know, a Bigfoot sighting? It's all these things that are when you look at them are independent things but they all like congregate here in this in the forest this, this bridgewater triangle region the, the hockamock swamp i think is viewed as the beating heart of the bridgewater triangle and that's where we are right now it's one of the largest if not the largest swamps in new england it's a major aquifer zone um, there's a lot of wild life here there's a lot of parts of this this swamp that have probably never seen man the language spoken by the native american tribes in this region was algonquin and i've been told that hockamock is algonquin for place where spirits dwell. It's weird because like there, it, it feels like calm here, but then at night I've had so much weird things happen. That's why I keep coming back here. This is, that's why I'm glad like I, I called you up because I wanted to know your take on things. Well, yeah, as a skeptic, you have to ask the question, is there something weird really happening here or is it because the region has developed a reputation for being weird that people just assume that, but because we're in the Bridgewater right. Triangle in the Hockamock Swamp, your mind automatically goes to, oh, that's a Bigfoot, or that's a Thunderbird, or that's, True. you know. So it, it, a lot of it, I think, could be explained by, you know, people's mind, the mind is a very powerful thing. Yeah. And sometimes people may not realize that they're attributing something to being paranormal just because they're in this area that already has this reputation. There was more than just Bigfoot reports in the Mothman. There was UFO sightings as well here. Do you know any of that? Yeah, the 1975 UFO story that we featured in the documentary. There were two radio reporters that were coming uh, off of Route 24 off to the 106 exit to head to the Raynham Do Taunton dog track to do some betting on dog racing. And as they were taking the exit, they saw this gigantic home plate shaped craft come right over the exit, flying very low, very slow, with like a uh, sparks coming off the back of it, making this like low humming noise. It was like nothing they had ever seen before. Now you're talking about two radio news reporters. Yeah. They could not believe what they saw. It flew over the car, made all this commotion and sound, and then just took off. What ended up happening was they didn't realize, but hundreds of people across this region had been seeing a similar craft in the sky. And the Brockton Enterprise newspaper actually ran an article back then about what people were seeing. And the composite drawing in the newspaper article was an exact match for what these two news reporters had seen off the 106 exit. Wow, all right. So what do you think of that, Raddick? If you had a, what do you think of that? Well, I mean, if a lot of people saw it, maybe it might be real. Oh, the, yeah. the whole UFO thing, it, it, people, you gotta remember, it doesn't always necessarily mean extraterrestrial. Yeah. It could be a craft, some sort of top secret government aircraft. That's right, that, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's great you brought that up because that's actually what I believe in. I'm not sure if I believe in aliens like everyone else. I'm more of the same way. I think it's just some, U, so I think the UFO is just some top secret military thing that they made. That's exactly, that's literally what I do believe in. Well, where could everyone see your Bridgewater Triangle documentary? The film's available on Amazon Prime, so it's free for people that have an Amazon Prime membership. It's available ad-free. It's also on YouTube, but you gotta sit through the commercials. It's now on Tubi as well, but you gotta, gotta sit through the commercials there. You can rent it on Apple TV. It's all over the place. That's I mean, you, awesome. You can't miss it. All right, guys, well, hey, you gotta check out his stuff. I mean, he helped us. He came out here, gave us his input on this place, which we really appreciate it. So definitely check out his stuff in the link description down below. So what'd you think of Aaron? Aaron. Really cool guy and like he has um yeah I like that he's a skeptic and he doesn't you know he's right sh he's showing that he doesn't believe in it which is why he's chasing it he's trying to chase it to find out what it is or if it's even real and he thinks and he's still a skeptic so yeah. he can see something in front of him and he's still going to believe mm -hmm. A skeptic thing. He's still gonna be like, okay, yeah, that's a ghost, but like, eh, it's still a skeptic thing. You know what I mean? And I get that because that's how I was. But with my experiences here in this forest, I know for sure there's something in here. 
And that's why I'm starting to believe that the creature aspect, the realm is real, because that ties in that to skinwalkers. And skinwalkers are shapeshifters just like yeah. this Pukwudgie. And it also has to do with Native American lore. That's a very interesting connection, right? actually. That's almost like the same thing, but in a it, different way. Exactly. But we're in this forest together and we're gonna figure it out. Now, Radic, before we go in the forest, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna call Tyler because I want him to join us. I don't want it to be just us yeah. two in the forest. Yeah, that yeah. is way too dangerous. I know, right? Yeah, it's no, like, so. Even Aaron said that there's like, you know. Satanic people, satanic yeah, no, people no, that is 100%. So here's the thing, another story, back when I was, uh, I'm, dude, this, I'm not just pulling this out my <laughs> Back when I was, uh, I think 17, I came into this forest and these people on this quad, 14, I don't even know, four people, they could have been teenagers, I don't know, but they came out with like, like machetes and they were actually looking for us. Dude, and we hid serious? in, yeah, we hid into the swamp. I can call my friends right now and they would vouch for me. We hid in the swamp, just silent because we were getting chased by other people. I know there's people that do satanic rituals in this forest. Now, no one should be in here at night on a Tuesday, just so you guys know. So if anything happens, we hear anything, it's all recorded. No way someone's just gonna do a stroll at nine o'clock at night or so. Now, before we keep going, guys, I just want to let everyone know that we put a lot of work into our videos. We are the first ones to do a lot of things on YouTube, different spots, different places. I just want to be recognized for that. So please, if you're new here, thumbs up and subscribe for watching this video. Now, we also sell merch. This merch is not just some crappy YouTube merch. This is well, well, good stuff. Uh, you can get it at a mall or something. Yeah, up really quick before we get right back into the video because I rudely interrupted everyone on this epic adventure through one of the most, if not America's most haunted swamp. I just want to say really quick, guys, I have two announcements. First, I have a brand new limited edition Christmas style Beyond the Dark hoodie, and it's right here. Now, this is what you're looking at right now. This is because it's not out yet. It's the pre-sale before the real sale. I get all the clothes sent to my house pretty much the day before December 1st, and then I'm going to ship them all to you guys. So I decided, well, this is limited. I want people to get their hands on it early as fast as I can. Here's what it looks like. This is a sick design. You see the, the, the ghost face. You see the Christmas style lights on it. You see the knife. You see everything you need. And then on the wrist, you can also see on the wrist the, the bloody handprint. So this is a limited edition of with the Alpine Green hoodie, guys. I'm just so excited to release it. I just wanted to give you guys it early. You can get that at risesabove.shop. Now, before we get back in the video, really quick, I just want to say thank you guys so much for collecting my cards. I really do appreciate it so much. We have four brand new ones coming out, releasing probably by the time this video is out. And I just want to say thank you so much. This is the Exploring with Josh Beyond the Dark Abandoned Exclusive Card Collection Sales. I mean, look at the back. I mean, it's, it's generally going to be abandoned cards, though. I love this so much. I seriously do. I'm the only YouTuber to definitely start selling cards. So, guys, that's what I'm saying. We go hard. We're independent. Support all the merch, all the money you guys get. Even with my new card sales, comes right back into this video, and it helps make more. So, again, collect all the cards you can. You got to get them all. Trust me. We have some holographic ones, first edition ones. Everything's coming out. means a lot. Back into the video. Now, serious question, explorers. I want you guys to comment below if you believe in creatures or not. I just want to know, if you don't believe in creatures, comment below that you don't believe in creatures. All right. But, so we have Tyler here dude. with us now. So, dude, you know about the Hockamock Swamp. You read about it now. What's your thoughts on tonight? Uh, you've never been here so, yet. So, I've never been to this spot. And the craziest thing is, is that, yes, we have these puck wedgies, but there's so much more here in this it's, one spot. It's like a buffet. So, it's, it's exactly. It's like a buffet of creatures, monsters, paranormal activity, everything with to aliens going to Bigfoot. I know. It's, it's insane. Now, if we capture some ghost stuff, because we are going to do a certain... Two ghost kind of rituals to try to like bring them to come out. But one thing is, what they say, the puck wedgies actually did communicate way back in the day. Knowing how long it was, I don't know, but way, way back in the day, these puck wedgies actually communicated with humans. They did. But they don't now. I, there wasn't anything really saying on why they don't, but if there is any type of way that we can try and communicate with these things, we're going to try and just show it our best interest, let them know that we're not there for any harm. and. I mean, if there is some type of opportunity, we might be able to, you know, who knows? You could talk to one of these things. I know. Uh, you know, we could bring one home, hang out with it. No. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we're going to see, guys. Let's get into it. We're starting right now. All right, so we're about to be here right now. There's a parking spot. We got the ghost gear. We also got the camera with a new night vision thing on top. Dude. It's going to be able to detect from far away. And that's just in case 
if we did come across the Pukwudgie or any other creature, it's gonna just detect it. Like we have the best night vision on the best night vision camera. All right, well, it all starts here. We gotta go inside here and cut through these like power lines. It's gonna be a long walk through here. So, just see how it goes. You can hear the zapping noises maybe from all the electricity. So I'll have some kind of rules. If we see the orb of light, just, you know, someone kind of like, you know, I'm sure we're all gonna see it, but just, hey, shh. Shut, I'll shut my light right away yep. or use his. Right. Or I'll shut this light off so I can still capture it on both cams. Yeah. Okay. If you guys hear anything, same thing. Just like, oh, go, 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 go. You know what I mean? Because well, we anything. Be loud, then, right? No, I don't want to be loud because here's the other thing. Let's say there is someone in this forest at night. What we want to do is also be kind of quiet just because we don't want to alert them either. Oh, yeah. My camera light is going to alert them before anything. So I rather we see them before we, they see us. So I want to use the night vision a lot more just because of that reason too. Why? Oh, dude, this is like a horror movie. Yeah. Oh. Just walk through at night and Whoa. you don't even oh. know. <laughs> I, I think those are all bats. Oh Wait, no. Look, there's no way. Oh. Yeah. No, they no, they're, they're like birds. Look, they're Look, birds. They're, no, they're birds. They're, they're birds. Oh, dude, this is insane. <laughs> As soon as we get deeper in, this will all be gone. These birds won't be here. It's just, we gotta keep going through. Remember to always look in the sky because apparently there's Mothman, uh, freaking <laughs> everything's in here. And look down on the floor, Dude, too. There's a dead bird right there. Look at no. that. No. This is a bad thing. Someone got taken out here. Oh my god. Yeah, someone got taken out. Just the birds let alone. I know. Oh! Dude! It's decapitated, like cut off! Why is their head chopped off? Why? All right, so one thing, it's creepy as anything. Yeah, of course, dude, I mean, I this is a start. We're about five minutes in. <laughs> Just Not saying. even, bro! <laughs> and the, anything on this road, on, I've seen this, I've seen the orb, yeah, but really? I've been chased out. In the Bridgewater Triangle, there's been already reports and actual murders here from like satanic rituals in the Bridgewater Triangle. That was at Freetown, still connected within these lands. Dude, that almost sounded like talking. I heard talking or something, yeah. It was that way. It was. Oh, birds. <laughs> Hello? If anyone's out there, we come in peace. We mean no harm, we're just here to visit. Or nothing. <clears throat> Just keep going and see what happens. Yeah. By the way, guys, if you guys don't know Tyler, Tyler, explain who you are. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Tyler, and uh, I previously, or I guess, I just got into all of the ghost hunting stuff, and it's been interesting. But yeah, it's just your channel. Yeah. Oh, and the channel is Tyler Reynolds TV, and we have a few things planned up that we might be doing soon. So it's going to be pretty interesting. If you guys and... want to stop by. I bet you if we did this whistle, all of the birds would fly. Should we do it? Like, if you blow the whistle right now, it's dating back to like war times. It could maybe even potentially wake up some of that residual energy. What's that? Oh, it's the. Dude, you can hear the lines. Yeah. See how it's getting quiet now as we get more deeper into? Ah! There was no reaction. None. Oh, it's an owl, it's an owl. That's an owl. We are, I hear, the, I hear the owl. But when you hear an owl, it means either skinwalkers or it's just an owl in the forest. Yes. Take it how you want it. It's but we're in, in Native American tribes. It goes along with skinwalkers. We know there's some creatures in here. I always keep an open mind now because anything goes in this dang forest. But now I'm starting to actually feel like they know we're here almost. Like it sounds weird, but I don't know. Well, we came in with a whistle. I, I know, I know, you're right. All right, we're gonna keep going deeper. This is, I know we are now. This is the is section. Is that a sign? Still that right there. Let's go up to it. 
but I know where we are. Yeah. This is the section where like we turn into the forest. All right. There's no way. I can, like, yeah. why this bush? All right. So, I've never been down there in my life. Just so you guys know, I've never been over there in my life. The only place I've ever went and seen the orbs was on this road and in here, which we're about to go into. Let's go deeper inside this tunnel. And then we're gonna totally wing what happens. So the moon is pretty full tonight, by the way. It's so bright that it's really making this video better for us because it's making this whole place around us more visible to see. Once we're in here, anything goes. Like, I've, like I said, I've, I've seen it all. I've heard it. The puck wedgies have been chased out. It all, for me, happens here. Now, there's way more, obviously, entrances and places to be where you can see them, but my experiences always happen right in there. You so, haven't gone further. It, like I've been all the way down this path. Sometimes I've seen no puck wedgies, no orbs of light, and sometimes I, I've seen it. So it's always random. We're gonna go in, we're gonna do some stuff. If nothing happens, we can even check that side, which I've never done in my whole life. I'm gonna shut the lights off now, because if there is anyone in here and they see us, that's not good. So we're gonna be doing IR in the whole time from now on. So we're switching over to that camera. Here we go. If we see any light, I swear to God, bro, it is 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. at night. There should be no one in this forest roaming it. They're probably up to no good. I don't want to run into anyone. I will literally run from them or hide. Did you hear that? I heard yell? a huge stomp. A huge yell is what I heard. So we're at the middle, by the way, as the wind picked up. Ooh, what? Oh, what? Shh, shh, shh. Hang on. I captured it, I think, for a second. I don't know. It feels like a snarl. Dude. Can we turn on the light? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that was a snarl. I picked it up on camera. Right where things the happen. Wind picked up. The wind picked up. Oh, I heard it. Again, the snarl, very faintly. Maybe shut the light and see if we can see it. Is there any puckwudgies or skinwalkers in this forest? I know you like to turn into an orb, a ball of light, and roam through here. One thing I'll say is we heard that you used to once communicate with humans. We apologize for whatever happened in the past. But the thing is, we mean no harm. We're here just learning. And if you can understand us, and you are giving us a warning, I ask for you to give that to us again, please. If you're okay with us being here, can you give us a sign? If you don't care, can you give us a sign?
I think what we should do is, like I said, hook up some drum music. I have it in my bag. Is this where you want to do it? Yeah, this is the center. The right center here. of what though? I don't, like the center where like, we usually kind of do stuff and camp and hang here and listen. <laughs> what snarl, so that's crazy. Like anything around here can ha anything can happen. What is that? Oh, just boards. Oh, people shooting here. He says all uh, gun bullets. Now look at that. Dang! They cut like half that tree down. Literally, that's messed up. That tree can like, probably soon. But trust me, when you see it, you're gonna see it. It's, it's visible as hell. All right, let's try another one. That. You heard that, right? Yeah. A little like. Keep playing that. We're here to talk to the puckwudgies that used to live here. Keep playing that, and we'll do it. Some say you're a creature. Some say you're three to four feet tall. I've seen you before. We're trying to communicate with you. We mean no harm. We just want to know who you are. If anything wants to communicate, please come forward. We're just here to gather evidence. Are you here? Hello? We think we heard you. Can you say something again, please? Want to try um, randomly asking an EVP? Yeah. And actually asking, like, hey, is like, you know, like, is there a do puck, a puck which is real? Like, actually yeah, asking yeah. it. Because the people, if there is people here by now, they'll know, they'll tell us. Maybe we can get some idea from the spirit world whether or not and this monster situation. And ask where it is. Too. Yeah. It's quiet. It's okay. I mean, I don't expect to always capture stuff. Don't get me wrong, but I just don't know. Okay. How many people are here with us right now? Are puckwudgies real? Is there anything strange in these part of the woods? Something's peeking on the 
tree right now. I just saw its head pop out. Yep. Straight in front of me. <gasps> you I heard it? it? I heard it. You heard nobody it? Move, nobody Dude. Move. They're all quiet. They're all quiet. They're all quiet. <gasps> I heard voices. End that real fast. That's a duck. Okay. Can I shine my light? Are you holding? I mean, I'm looking right now. But what did you see? I didn't see it. I, I wasn't in the right angle. Dead ass, bro. Right. About four feet high. I seen this thing. Oh. Yeah. I heard it though, so like. Yeah, I'm gonna we heard it. I think I seen you. You don't need to be. You don't need to be afraid. You said it was four feet tall. About four feet, dude. And all I see is from the side of the tree, right? Say the tree's right here. I just see this. No, oh. I've seen the shadow of it though. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's the first time I've ever, ever seen anything like that. Whether or not it's something out here or if it's paranormal, well, I have never seen that. If, if you saw that now, that means maybe we might just see an orb any second now. That's what I'm hoping. Well, remember, they shapeshift into orbs. Oh, that was so scary. Like, I've seen the shadow, but I'm like, okay, am I, am I playing tricks with myself? I mean, if you both saw it, it's got to be I, legit, we, you, you heard know? it, though. I heard something moving, yeah. I heard it moving, but I didn't see it. I started recording the whole time. Don't know. Are pop watches real? What? Is there anything strange in this part of the woods? Did yes, there yes? is. Play that again? Watch. Is there Watch. It's going to say, yes, there is. Yes, there is. You heard that? <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Yes, there yeah. is. And, and right after they said that, that is when you guys the, saw the shadow correct. pop out yeah. from behind the yeah. trees. All right. The thing is, we're looking for an orb. The orb can appear anywhere. We can go deeper down there, come back here, a lot of walking. I'm not here for ghosts, per se. I'm yeah. just here to find that creature. And I want it. You know? So, it is about 11 at night or so now. No signs of orbs. And the only thing we really caught was maybe some shadow figures that could have been with our playing with our eyes. Some sounds. We did hear a girl kind of scream, though. That was a bit weird, but you know, nothing too crazy. <gasps> oh, nothing. Jesus Christ, bro. <laughs> What'd you guys see? It's not there anymore. It was up in like the tree line. Yeah, yeah, it was a quick little flash. It was a big flash. Yeah. And I'm recording now, so. See, I wasn't recording it, but you guys just seen flashes. So yeah, it was not above the tree line, but in the tree yeah. line, and I just seen this flash. Yep. Could have been maybe electricity. I'm glad you seen that too. No, dude, there's no electricity. It, it right wasn't there. a star. It was <laughs> and it was too bright for that to be a plane. Yeah, no, it was. But it was in the tree line. If, if it was a plane, we'd be seeing it actually, like yeah, across we here we seen or it. across there by now, and it's not. And it wasn't like a little dot. It, was, it wasn't a little dot. It was maybe the size of a baseball from where we are. Yeah, yep. All right, so you guys both seen it, so that's something. Now remember, they say up in the trees, they'll, you'll see orbs, just so you guys know. I don't know any of the story. Yeah, so yeah that, that well, makes that's sense. the whole thing. So that's something, I wish I captured it. Well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna record, record the whole time. Yeah, how about we just keep walking? And maybe We're gonna maybe record the whole time. Back, yeah. Okay. So one of the things I do wanna bring up really quick is the fact that Remember when we heard the big bang and you jumped or well, because we thought you seen like someone in the, in the yeah. bush the first time Remember when you thought oh if it was a deer we would have heard it jump around you're yeah. right We didn't that there was someone in there. We heard it. I mean Tyler was like whoa That could have been anything But the thing is if it was a deer like you said you would have heard like gallop away it, it would have been running away. Yeah, so that is one thing I just want to bring up. I don't know 
that could be anything, but I want to say like that's something. We're now walk, like I said, we're walking back now towards the main four-way intersection, and we're gonna go deeper. I've never been that deep in there before. The only thing I can get freaked out about is that if we do see an orb behind us, like I'm watching my back. Yep. It's not running and it's not moving. It doesn't seem to be coming closer to us anymore. Who's there? We heard you moving. As you guys heard, clear as day footsteps. Could have been a deer, could be Bigfoot, could be Mothman, it could be the puck wedgies. We have no idea. But I mean, you can't make that up. I mean, that was clear as day, what we heard. Oh, no, clear as day. I mean, it has to be on the camera. Who's over here? I'm gonna go in a little bit. Whatever it is, it's not leaving. Is it in the trees? That is the weirdest. I mean, if they're tricksters, maybe they're playing tricks on us right now, making us think we're Unless they want us to go in there. Should we go? No. <laughs> That's like skinwalker shit. I would go. Go in. Go down there. There's no way I'd go in there. That's the, dude, that is kind of unexplainable. It The sounds came from right where Radic was. So how do we not hear anything anymore. Dude, the thing is, I keep wanting to say it's a deer, but we would hear them run. That's the second time. That is the second time to where we've had anything like that to where we should have heard it run. <laughs> I agree. I actually do freaking agree. And I do agree with what Radek was saying is that I did only hear what it sounded like to be two feet. Yeah, no, me too. 
Guys, there's nothing here. I know, bro. Nothing. I know. That is very unexplainable. I don't know. And this I'm going to need people. softer and softer as I walk Oh, you're getting into the swamp, so don't go yeah. too far. Yeah, you're going to sink in. How soft is it right there? Like, do you have to... So the thing if is, I walk any further, I might start sinking in. If we heard a deer, it cannot be past where Raddick is for it to make that sound, which it would have been right here, which we would have it's, seen because it's we right where Raddick it. is. Yes. Yeah. So guys, comment below. Do you think it was a deer or not? And if it was a deer, why don't we see it go away anymore? Run away, gallop away. I mean, you heard it clear as day with the camera. I was pointing right at it and now it's gone. Raddick's deep in the woods now. Right, can you walk? Yeah, I keep walking. Actually, it's not. There's like patches of dry land. All right, but walk. I want to hear your sound. Okay. So again, that's literally the same distance we heard. This. And whatever it was, it sounded smaller. Does it sound like me or smaller? It sounded just like just you. like you. Same sound, matching. Coming out this way, yep. easier. That's the same sound we That's heard, same, same distance. Same sound. They were right up to us, now they're gone. Bro, I think those are Pukwudgies playing tricks, but I don't know. I can't prove that, and it sounds stupid. Like. Why does part of me wants to go back into the forest right now? Back where we just were. Not all the way in, but like a three minute walk in. You wanna try it? Go I kinda do. I Something's telling me to go in again now. I know, like I said, the forest is weird. This forest plays tricks. I'm gonna go down just a little bit. Five minute walk over. Then we're gonna turn around and never come to this area again because we have more to look at. Well, what if we go down and we turn back and it takes us somewhere else like Bear Witch? Oh my God, I doubt <laughs> it, but that'd be insane. I'll kill myself before they kill me. So right now my theory is, is like, we, you know, we went inside, we had a few movements, few things truckle, tr trick us a little bit. We came out here right at the entrance before we would even go in to leave or whatever, we heard it again, but full on movement, the crazy ever. Radic goes, checks it out, there's nothing there. All of a sudden we're about to leave, you hear a little bit of footsteps again over there. They're tricking us, if that's what it is. So now, I feel like because they didn't show themselves fully or an orb of light down there, now they wouldn't expect us to go back in there. We're gonna go back in there first, try to trick them. If nothing happens, we're gonna leave and move on. It's gonna get super late, so I don't wanna stay out here super late, but all right. It is spooky looking for creatures though. I never thought, you know, instead of looking for ghosts, we're looking for creatures, monsters. It's fun, it's exciting. Comment below if you want us to do more of these videos. Trust me, there is a lot of crazy creatures I have, a lot of locations where people claiming they've seen some crazy stuff. I'm just saying. So we walked our distance. We're now turning around for good and walking out, going to different areas, but. Again, we heard, we thought we heard whispers or something. <clears throat> I kept it on record. Maybe we didn't hear anything. But, yeah. Maybe there is nothing going on right now. We are now out of the forest, but we did not see any orbs or hear anything at that moment. I don't know what to expect looking for a creature or a floating orb. <laughs> or any kind of monster in the forest. Of course, we're not gonna like probably find anything, but you just never know. Like I've I've been in this forest, I've captured it before, so I know it's real. But I mean, this is way more harder than ghost hunting. You're, the chances of capturing something is so slim. Like Skinwalkers is really hard, Bigfoot's really hard, the, all this stuff's hard. Loch Ness Monster has only been seen probably like three times, so it's tough. I mean, we did actually really good for what we caught. And if yeah. you think about it, Tyler, like towards the end, when, I mean, you, I mean, actually, and when you think about it, towards the end, when like we were about to leave and get yeah. out, <clears throat> we heard walking. Yeah, that oh, was dude. scary. Full blown yeah. walking. Yeah. Now, what was it? I don't know. It sounded like two feet, though. It sounded like two feet. It sounded like walking, and we got close to it, and nothing ran away. Nothing was there. That could have been an actual Pukwudgie. Yeah. Could have been Bigfoot. Could have been anything. I mean, it, it sounded smaller <laughs> than us. Like, a little bit smaller, you know? It did. Yeah. And that's what makes, like, I love that we captured that at the end. You know, I felt like there were definitely, if if it was were the Pukwudgies, they were definitely like, kind of, like, tricking us. We heard stuff oh, yeah. gallop or move in, in the front mm -hmm. or in the middle of the circle. 
You know, that's all like legit stuff. I mean, I don't know. What's your take on it? See, like, I always want to say it's an animal, right? Because we're outside. Yeah, it could I get be that. anything. But the thing is, at the end of the day, we didn't hear anything run away, which is the thing that throws me off the most. Yeah. Now, if we want to look at it on the whole monster side and things, you said they can transform. Did did something happen like that to where we heard the footsteps, got closer to it? We didn't hear any running away. And I'm looking at it as a side of what we were trying to go investigate right. for. Was it that? We don't know. But the thing that will just throw me off still is not hearing anything run away. Yeah, exactly. that's the same with me. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know. We did good today. I think we did good. We It's literally 1230 at night. We've been out there exploring since 8. It's about a good four-hour explore through it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we could go out there longer. There's there's 16, what was it, acres? 16,000 acres. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. We, yeah. we, we can't just roam nonstop. I mean, eventually, it's just, it's just we're going to be out there all night looking for... It's it's a lot of work, and it's a lot to like try to find. I think this was a really good attempt at trying to find the Pukwudgie. Um, we, you got you guys who didn't know about this forest knows about it now. It really is like a Bermuda kind of triangle. And hey, if you like this episode, let me know in the comments down below because I want to do a lot more, um, but maybe a lot more more intensive searches for ghosts or no, well creatures, monsters. So. If you guys like this, comment down below. Um, check out these two guys' channels and things like that. Link in the description down below for them. And we'll see you guys next time. Rise above. Just got out to an explore. Peace and thanks for watching. Woo! That's All a wrap. Right.